Plata is a blockage to the flow of chi. And this is the reason why when we declutter the space, it doesn't matter if office or home, uh, you release blockages. So the chi starts flowing and then you have this feeling of, of you can breathe again and things are happening and you're seeing opportunities. And this is what life uh, force or chi brings in, for our lives. And so I think this is the most important and most, most basic principle we should turn to when we start working with feng shui. Hi, it's Richard, and welcome to the Conscious Marketer Podcast, and I'm also joined by Kylie. Hi, Kylie. Hey. And uh, I'd like to introduce you to Danielle Saponich, and she is a feng shui and space healing master with over 20 years of experience. She is the founder of Unfolding Space and the Space Healing Method in her school of spiritual design. She teaches aspiring practitioners to tap into their intuitive abilities and create balanced spaces. Hi, Daniela. Welcome. Hi, Richard. Hi, Kali. Thank you for having me. Yeah, happy to have you. And uh, many of our listeners may not know this, but I actually lived in Asia for 10 years and I lived in Hong Kong for maybe five or six. And what's interesting in Hong Kong is if you talk to the uh, business owners, they would never build an office or a space without consulting a feng shui expert. Um, and on staff, they have people that will do this. And this is also true in Japan and Singapore and other places in Asia. And it's in the West, it's becoming bigger as well. Um, but with Daniela today, we're going to talk about how to bring um, some of the principles of feng shui into your business and your marketing so that you have more creative flow um, maybe you could start, Daniela, by just sharing a little bit about your backstory and how you came into your current line of work. Oh, absolutely. So I um, studied economics and marketing at the University of Applied Science in Munich. And just as I finished and graduated, I couldn't find a job. So it was just like, you know, I was working for this vision like my whole life. And then, like, I felt back then nobody wanted me. Today, I know it just wasn't my path. Um, and just around that time, I was really looking for solutions. And um, there was an article where they talked about if you feel stuck in your life, you should declutter your home. And I remember thinking, yeah, right. Like, no way, this is going to help. I, I wasn't just, I couldn't believe it. But then since it didn't get better, I told my husband, well, let's try this thing with this decluttering. I like, just let's try. So we did, we decluttered our small um, one bedroom apartment over a weekend. And I was like shocked how much stuff we got out. And I have to say, it's not like clutter, it's not trash. So I always considered my home like really being neat and tidy, but there were so many things we didn't need. And um, things started to move. I saw new opportunities and we got to move to another apartment. And this was enough for me to be really, really curious about this thing around spaces. And back then I was 26. I was married for like three years and we had a little boy. And uh, this is where I started this new career. But everybody said like, why don't you take just a normal job because it's so like you should. And I was like, no, it doesn't feel right. So this is when I started pursuing Feng Shui and this is um, 20 years ago. And how did you, how, how did you study this? Was it kind of like personal experience or like, like how do how does one teach oneself to learn how to clear a new space? And I'm just kind of curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, uh, I was looking for feng shui schools, and back then I decided to learn from an um, uh, Asian feng shui master who was teaching in Europe. Um, and, you know, I, I'm i teaching feng shui myself, too. Um, and what I tell my students is in, in certifications, you can learn feng shui just so far that you understand the principles. And then by doing consultations, by really diving into questions, by really, really looking into the philosophy of feng shui and Taoism, this is where you start mastering your craft. So you get a set of skills and then you start working with them. And this is what I've been doing for the last 20 years. What are some of the basic principles for people that have no idea what feng shui is? What are what are some of the foundational pieces that you that you started out with or that you start other people out with? Mm -hmm. So the most foundational piece is 
the flow of life force energy. This is when it's not flowing, it keeps us stuck. Uh, we know it from acupuncture, like when life, flow, uh, life force energy is not flowing through your body, you, you feel blockages and then you go to an acupuncturist and you get your treatment so that the blockages are released. So this is uh, the best way to explain how feng shui works in your home. So for example, clutter is a blockage to the flow of chi. And this is the reason why when we declutter the space, it doesn't matter if office or home, uh, you release blockages so the chi starts flowing and then you have this feeling of, of you can breathe again and things are happening and you're seeing opportunities. And this is what life uh, force or chi brings in, for our lives. And so I think this is the most important and most, most basic principle we should turn to when we start working with feng shui. I'm kind of curious, what are some of the biggest, um, I'm always one about like digging into like why people are failing. <laughs> what are, <laughs> what, so what are some of the big mistakes people make when they're, you know, thinking about their creative space and how to optimize it, you know, or what are they just not even thinking about? You know, what's, what are some of the things that you see time and time again that, you know, like they didn't get the, I, sometimes I say they, they didn't get the memo, you know, what's the memo that you would hand out to all aspiring creators if they really wanted to get their work into the world and create a, an amazing space to work from. Mm -hmm. So uh, you are always um, the master of the energy of your space and also the master of the energy of your life. So uh, in Feng Shui, we very often talk about placing a fountain to enhance the flow of money and abundance. And if you just stay with the fountain piece, so just putting a fountain in a corner and you say, okay, this is the fountain and you put it in there and you're like, okay, where's the money? So this is not working. So no Feng Shui remedy is working by itself. So if you use something, just put an intention to it and then go into action. So let this fountain, if we stay with this example, let this fountain can be just a symbol for yourself to remind you, oh, okay, uh, as the water is flowing, just that's how my abundance and my opportunities and my inspiration is flowing. So let it be just this reminder to take action, to take inspired action. So just don't outsource your power to an item. And this is what I very often see when people start creating feng shui. Like, I've created feng shui in my space and now let's see the results. And, you, you know, one of my mentors, my early mentors, um, they said, I was just fresh out of the feng shui um, certification. And she's like, Daniela, while you're meditating, money is not going to fall into your lap. Let's get to a strategy. And so this is like, yes, I think that's a connection. <laughs> what has okay. ha shifted for some of your entrepreneurial clients? I know that a lot of people listening have their own business, have their own healing practice, coaching practice, or their service provider. If they started to work with some of the principles that you teach, what are some of the most common things that you see that shift for them? Um, so one thing is that uh, my clients start seeing more and bigger opportunities because they create clarity around themselves. Um, one of the um, big teachings in feng shui is what you see is what you get. And very often, for example, if you're listening to this now and you're sitting at your desk and if you look up, what do you see? Do you see a wall? Do you see um, a, vision uh, a vision board? Do you see a pin board with many different notes and like really a lot of confusion? If you look at your desk, what do you see there? Um, do you see clarity? Do you see your vision? Do you see, um, is it in alignment with where you want to be and how you want to feel? Um, so, and this is, this is just like when we get clarity around this. So when I look up and I'm like, I'm seeing and I'm connected to my vision and I'm seeing wideness instead of um, looking at the wall, I turn my desk and look out of the window. I see a liveness. I see the heaven. I see people. Um, this just brings it because people are bringing opportunities in our lives. We cannot be successful without the interaction with others. So by seeing others, uh, it just brings aliveness and it brings us the association with, oh, there are people around there, especially online entrepreneurs. We end up being a lot of time at our offices, maybe even in our home offices. So this is a way how to create a bridge to the outside world, uh, although staying in, in the office for a very long, like during many days. Yeah, that's great. So um, so this principle of what you see is what you get. You want to basically be designing your space so that you're c continually getting inspired. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. 
When you walk into somebody's office space, what are the specific things that you start looking for? Like I hear you talk a little bit about you want to know what's on your desk and everything, but I also know there's like things about doorways and corners and this wall and that wall. What are some of the Mm -hmm. like nuts and bolts of it? Mm -hmm. So um, I always, the first thing I look at is the desk. Is the position of the desk. Um, Ideally, it's not positioned in a way that you have a door behind you and uh, looking at the wall. So especially the door behind is um, taking up a lot of our focus because the subconscious is like, oh, my back is not secured. Somebody could come from behind and attack me. So we are talking here reptile consciousness, right? Surviving consciousness. But even if you know I'm safe, but still the subconscious is like high alert. So this is what we try um, to avoid by placing a desk in a way where you have a wall behind you. And ideally you can see the window and the door so that your subconscious can say, okay, I'm safe. Everything is fine. And you get, this is how you get energy and focus back um, into your everyday uh, everyday life and, and um, especially work life. The other thing is I take a look at the desk and I see how stable the desk is. I remember once a client and uh, we were talking and I leaned on his desk and it was really shaking. And then I told him, well, it feels like your business is staying, uh, is like placed on very shaky legs. And he's like, how did you know this? And it's like, your your desk is kind of really, really shaking. And then he told the whole story around this desk, which was, which was very interesting. But, you know, in feng shui, the desk is like the, the, the base of your business. It's where you build your business, right? So you want it to be really stable. It doesn't have to be too heavy, but to be stable and clean and clear. Um, and, you know, now I'm very often asked by, um, by people who are um, like traveling and they don't have a desk. Like we have changed how we work. Like, I don't have a desk. I just have my laptop. Okay, then be mindful where you place your laptop to work on. Like, like placing it on the beach every day. It's like, I don't know if this is, like, really how you want to build your business. So everybody has his own or her own um, way to work. But just be mindful. And even if you are working at your dining table after the breakfast or breakfast table, wherever, just clean it up. Like, clean it. And then I always say, wrap your pounds and then you recreate the energy of the desk. You're like, okay, now you are my working desk. You just like declare it and you change the energy because you are the master of the energy. The energy is not master- mastering you. So I'm kind of curious. They, there's a saying like how you do one thing is how you do everything. And I'm kind of curious if you look at somebody's space or their laptop or their kitchen or their closet, is that true? And should should this approach to feng shui like extend through your whole life or not and how does what do you see in your clients how this starts to affect everything that they do oh i love this question richard so um usually it is how you do anything is how you do everything so if um if you start with clutter um usually um it's same like the same energy and the same amount of clutter if you want to say it uh, it goes through the home and the office um, and, you know, sometimes um, changing one little habit is going to change your life at the long run, right? So also with feng shui and declutter, if it's, we just say quickly with the decluttering piece, um, I always tell my clients, don't um, make a big thing about the decluttering piece. Just see when you have a little, like two minutes while you're brushing your teeth, these two minutes, you can take a look in your bathroom and see what's clutter and just throw it on the floor. And when you're done, pick it up. And that's it. So just make it really simple, really easy. And this is how you start changing the energy of the space. So first it's a bathroom, then it's a drawer, then it's a little, just a piece in a kitchen while you're waiting for the water to boil and whatever. And this is how we create momentum and how we get energy into movement. Um, and then, you know, when you first start with the space and feng shui is a philosophy of life. It's not just how how do we create nice spaces? It's a philosophy of life. And then you start decluttering your inner space. You start decluttering your thoughts. Um, and this is then you you be like for me, I always say it's not I being a feng shui consultant sometimes and sometimes not like I am feng shui. It's just my philosophy of life. And even when I cook, I think about energy because you know, the energy, how I cook is the energy we are going to eat. So like, this is also feng shui. I always say this is feng shui for the soul and this is feng shui for the space. So 
So you, you mentioned clutter. I think that's such an amazing topic, especially because I, I literally moved from California to Nashville with nothing more than what fit in one car load. And, and that, and I've always lived my life like that. I've moved 23 times and I just don't hang on to stuff, but I know other people who have things from like their kindergarten teacher and like stuff like that, you know, and it's just like hanging on the wall or hanging out in a scrapbook or whatever. How do you help people decide what's clutter and what's not clutter? Yeah, the biggest thing about clutter is the emotional piece. And um, sometimes, um, you know, I just remind them that if you have, if you want to remember something and you need an item to remind you of this, I don't know if this is really worth remembering then, because the most important thing we will always have it have in our heart, we will embody it. So we don't necessarily need the painting from our first grade, right? Uh, but then I, you know, my when I work with people on the on the clutter or on the clutter topic, um, it's very often just bringing in clarity so that they can make their decision and shift their perspective. Um, and then sometimes, you know, people love to have things um, to collect stuff, and they're like, oh, the collection, I don't know. And then I tell them, well, take pictures, and then you have a like a book with the pictures of your collection, and you can let let it go. And so we're really creative with this, but very often people are like, oh, you're right. I'm so happy. Now I have the permission to let it go. Yeah. And I, it's kind of interesting because I once, I once flew down to Bali to work with, um, work with an author down there. And one of his techniques was to have different spaces for different energies. So one was like a creative energy. One was more contemplative. One was more productive. Do you recommend people have different spaces for different things so that the space itself has an energy. So when you step into that, it's kind of like you, you turn on a different identity or how do you think about that? Yeah. I mean, of course you can do it very detailed, but um, very often uh, we don't have so much luxury of space of having so many different spaces, you know, to create um, all these different areas, but you can, in feng shui, we are working with the yin and yang energy. And even if you have a meditative space, it's a yin energy. So if you, then if you have your office, it's a yang energy. So even uh, having the, you know, the yin and yang spaces divided, it's really very helpful. For example, if you have your workspace in your bedroom, it's con it's mixing up yin and yang energies, which means when you are working, you will feel a lot of yin energy and tiredness and wanted to relax and unwind. And while you're sleeping, you will feel the yang energies of, oh, I have to work and I need to do this and that. So it's disturbing. So um, I at least recommend people to try to bring, you know, to have yin and yang energy rooms so that when they go to bed, they can really go into the space and into the yin energy and start to unwind without having to think about it. And the same if you go to the yang place, when you start working. So it's the same principle, but a little simplified. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. We had someone on our podcast maybe a year ago or so. He was an energetic relocation specialist. And what he would do is he would help businesses decide what piece of land they should be on or what building they should be in. And, and it was really effective. He has a great success rate. He also helps people figure out where to move. And he helped me figure out Nashville was the place for me, which has been amazing. But I'm super curious because we're talking about offices and spaces and houses. How does this, how do these principles extend to the relationship between the structure that somebody's living in and the actual land that they're on? Do you see any pattern or correlation there? Mm -hmm. So what I look uh, into is um, is a piece of the space healing. It's um, the the past of the of the land where the house or the build or the building is. So what has happened in this place that the energy is as it is because uh, we are not the first humans uh, who live on the earth and we leave, we leave traces and the earth um, just you know remembers. So if there was a you know we have beautiful traces and we have. Not so nice reason. So if there was a, I don't know, a battlefield, no matter what kind of, and it's like 1000 years ago. And right now it's just, you know, a city and houses are sitting on there. And then people move in and like, oh, we have this beautiful house, but somehow it doesn't feel good. Everybody says we're crazy, but it's how this doesn't feel good. And this is, um, Kelly, where I look into what is the energy of the land, what is coming out of the land through the frequency of the earth into our space and how um, it is it influencing us. And usually it's something we cannot explain, but we really, really just feel it. 
It's such an important topic. I think it's definitely like a lost art, um, but some people have maintained it, but I think it's important to clear the, definitely the energies and, um, this is uh, super interesting. I just kind of one last question for me. Um, I'm kind of curious if somebody is maybe has creativity blocks, how do you, or somebody's feeling blocked and they've done everything in their space, how, what, what would you recommend to them so that they're like, okay, they can kind of retap into the inspiration and their kind of innate creativity is, does feng shui have a perspective on that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For example, um, if you, like there are different approaches. One approach is if you live in an apartment, usually when you uh, open your front door, for us, the front door, it's the eyes, it's the mouth. And usually apartment, the, if you open the front door, you're going into a hallway. It's not very inspiring. So, and if we follow what you see is what you get is, okay, you leave your home and you just run against walls. So it, the inspiration is not there. And then I, I recommend them just before you go out, just open a window with the best view you have and you open a window and you're like this is what i get i see whatever you see right and you invite the chi and all possibilities you see through that window into your life and this is where you really actively work with energy and actively open up the space the blockage of not seeing opportunities not being inspired by just opening the window and then we're like okay this is what i see and now i can leave and you can do the same if you have a home or a house and you open the front door and you're like, uh, no, this doesn't look good. Then just choose another window. Just make sure it's not the bedroom because this is a yang area, just, right? And then you can start opening up the space. And again, if uh, you say, okay, that's all set, what could be the next um, thing is really um, to see what is what you are seeing every single day when you go through your home. Um what are the paintings and the pictures in your home? What are the symbols? What are the statues? Like, what did you place in your home? Because it's, very often it's not conscious. Or when we place or hang a picture, uh, maybe we are not in such a good energy or in such a good mood. And then we forget about this piece and it continues influencing us. So if you like, if you have this, like, like what you just described, Richard, just take a conscious walk through your space and see what is in alignment and what isn't. And just first take it off. You don't need to replace it. Just create a space for the new things to like drop in. I love that you mentioned paintings and pictures because I actually meant to ask you about this earlier. Is there anything specific around wall art placement that you could say for people? Is there anything specific on that? Mm, well, um, it would like there are different calculations you need to do to have to give really specific um, specific advice uh, advisory to to this. But usually it's like just when you before you decide to hang a painting, just really go into the energy and connect to the painting and see if it's truly in alignment with what you want to achieve or where you want to be. Very often I have seen like paintings um, in my clients' businesses. But I remember one business and um, it was a very dark painting. Like, why is it hanging? I I came in and it felt like this heaviness. And she's like, oh, I have to have it because a client, she gifted it to me. And as long as she's a client, it needs to be here, blah, blah, blah. So I was like, oh my God. So just be mindful of what you hang. It's like when you wear stuff, you really want to um, be really mindful of what you put like in your mouth and what you want to wear. So just be aware of how you want your, pl- what, what do you want your place to wear like clothing? Well, I think you've given us a lot of great tips and um, I think probably people's attention and intention, attention and intention mm-hmm. is not often on the, the spaces we're creating to create uh, as we move out in the world. So I think this is a really good um Thing for people to think about and to kind of do a recce. If people want to reach out to you, Daniela, how can they get in touch with you to kind of hire you or to look into what 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 you do? Um, so yes, uh, uh, my happy place is on Instagram, um, Unfolding Space, um, and uh, we have also a welcome page for the listeners. It's unfoldingspace.com uh, backslash um, en and backslash consciousness. Um, but we will share this link also for you in the uh, notes if you want. 
Okay. Thank, thank you so much, Daniela, for sharing all your tips and ideas. And what we'll do is we'll drop all of her links in the show notes. You can find those at consciousmarketer.com forward slash podcasts. I uh, really appreciate having you here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. And thanks for all the listeners being on this episode and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.